chatty girls, boys and everything in between. Welcome back to Antics with Ash. Today is a bit of a different one. I have employed ADHD expert Hester Granger. Hello, Hello my darling. Thank you. Hello. By the way, she was here before Hermione Granger. We just <laughs> had that discussion. I was like, Granger, what? I hate that she's stolen that from you. I know, I it's know. It's not fair. No, her name's spelled differently. I'm right. right with that. Okay, she we can, can have it. And she owns it. It's fine. Agreed. It's fine. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So I just thought it would be really interesting to get you on today. Yeah. I feel like ADHD is such a topic. Yeah. Now, like more than ever. Yeah. Because I've always spoken about this with friends, with family. We've joked about it. Yeah. Um, mostly joked about how I. I'm chronic, but <laughs> have never been diagnosed. Yeah. And I feel like slowly but surely in, this, in the space of a year, my entire feed has just been ADHD, ADHD, ADHD. Yeah. And it's so interesting and I, I'm interested to get your thoughts on certain things mm -hmm. and just have a good old natter. Yeah, I'm here for that. Yay! Okay. First of all, what I wanted to ask you was, is ADHD on the autism spectrum? So, no. No. Okay. No. So, it comes okay. under the umbrella of neurodiversity, right? So, it's a neurodivergent brain. Mm -hmm. if you've got a neurodivergent brain, you are neurodivergent, yeah. singular, and then you have neurotypical people, so people who aren't autistic, for example, ADHD, but with under that comes dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, Tourette's, OCD, oh, wow. etc. So, think of it as like an umbrella, and ADHD is like a strand of that. Is a branch. That. Yeah. Okay. But there is a huge overlap with autism and ADHD. So you're now getting people diagnosing, like calling themselves ADHD, A-U-D-H-D. So my oh. husband, he's autistic and ADHD. Both my children are autistic and ADHD. Because I think if you're autistic, it's about a 70% chance that you're ADHD as well. Really? Yeah. Wow. And is there any link in terms of carrying that gene down? Yeah. Is there? Yeah, there is. There's studies on it. Because you saying like that. that your kids had it. I yeah. was like, is that probable because... Yes. You and it was present in you and your husband, or yeah. it often oh. runs in families, um, which is really interesting. So, what happens, and so I'm 46 for context, and I was diagnosed with ADHD at 43. And what actually happens is quite often at my age, the kids are being diagnosed, and then parents are going, Oh, oh, wait, oh. is that me? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Whereas I just never thought anything with the kids because I'm like, Well, I do that, and I do right. that. And my husband had the same when he was diagnosed was autistic, the kids were diagnosed autistic first, and he was like, but I do that, and I do this, and he's just like my son. Wow. And actually, that's where it comes. And then what you then find is quite often you find neurodivergent couples, so either autistic or ADHD, because you just get each other. If you've got mm -hmm. a neurodivergent brain, you don't need to explain things. You don't Like, he just gets me, and I get him. Right. So that's why you quite often end up going, hold on, this is like... No, really, that makes a lot sense. of sense. So I have a... This is so off topic. I have a tattoo artist yeah. who does all of my stuff, and she... Is autistic. Yeah. And all, basically, your tattoo artist kind of is the same as your hairdresser. They become a bit yeah, of a therapist. Yeah, yeah, you just, everything. yeah you just offload. Yeah. And, um, you know, you're sitting in the chair for how many hours and you're talking. And she is autistic. Yeah. And she said to me that she really struggles dating because she can't... There, there are lots of little quirks in mm. her, with her that I, I just think are beautiful. Yeah. But... Because my dad is. My dad's autistic. OK. And he's the greatest man on earth. He's yeah, just yeah. brilliant. But um, she said that she finds dating really difficult and there's mm -hmm. lots of little things like needing her own space and really yeah. being quite firm with that. You know, like, mm. when she's had enough, Boundaries. it's like... Yeah. Overwhelm. Yeah. Um, you've got to leave. <laughs> like, yeah. I need my own time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's really interesting that you say, because mm. she was saying to me, I think I need to date someone that is also neurodivergent, yeah. what you were saying. Yeah. Because then they're going to understand it. They're going to understand all these little nuances that I yeah. think someone without it might find as rude or, or you know... Or come across as a bit blunt. Or right. A bit, all of a sudden, if you've had enough and you're like... And I'm done. Yeah. That's it. Anyone else will be like, well, that's it then. We're off. Yes. It's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me out of your house. Yeah. Whereas actually it's like, no, no, I just need my space right now. Right. So, yeah, I think dating and, and being neurodivergent. I mean, I didn't date before I knew I got ADHD. Uh -huh. I've been with my husband. We've been together for like 22 years. We've yeah. been married for 16. But I can't imagine dating now knowing what I know about myself. Because you would. You'd overanalyze it. You'd second guess. You'd be like, am I saying the right thing? Mm -hmm. I, I talk a lot. High word count. 
gesticulate a lot. Like God, move can a lot. relate. Do high, you know what I mean? high word count. <laughs> do you know what? High I wouldn't be count. doing what I do, did if it wasn't for the high word count. But this is Otherwise it. Otherwise it wouldn't work. It so. wouldn't work. If you right. sat here in silence, we wouldn't have any antics with that. There you go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, silver linings. Yeah. So what made you want... Because did you say it was 43 that you got diagnosed? Yes. Yeah. That is so interesting to me. What made you... Was it what you said? Because your kids were... Yeah. What made you want to do that at that age? Yeah, it's such a good question. It's something, unsurprisingly, you know, get right. asked a lot. So during their assessment, so they've been diagnosed as autistic and then it was during lockdown that I noticed some ADHD traits mm -hmm. just because we were together so much. And I was like, my God, my son literally can't sit down. Um, and he can't <laughs> stop. Like, and I'm like, oh. But he's not your typical... You know, when you think of ADHD, mm -hmm. you often think of a little boy in class, lobbing chairs, not yes. being able to sit down. This is the cliche of ADHD. And this is why so many women girls as well get missed and boys and men as well but if really? you're I'll talk in a minute about the different types but yeah so during that their assessment because I just noted things you know weren't quite right maybe with the processing they're mm. super bright but I remember saying to my son Hudson like oh you know Kelly was doing some maths because maths is not my thing so he was like <laughs> God, same. oh my god no, terrible it's my worst nightmare yeah, yeah. failed my GCSE mm -hmm. three times not once but <laughs> Stop. Kept coming back for more. No, I'm a humanities yes. girl through and through. Yes. I can't bear yes. it. Yeah, no, exactly. No. Humanities. Yeah, humanities. You need that as a t-shirt. Yeah. That would be amazing. I'm a humanities girl. I'm here for that. Merch. Love that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. that can be our joint merch. Get on it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it was one of those during the the process I was looking and I was like, oh, have I got ADHD? And I honestly think one of the, the diagnostic questions for ADHD should be, how many times have you looked at an ADHD website or Googled the symptoms or like looked That's into so it? That's so funny. Like because so, I literally spent months and months and then it was, it was during the kids' assessment, it was in lockdown, so we're at home, it was on Zoom. And the psychologist literally said to me, so you've been diagnosed with ADHD? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you like, drink jazz hands in the back. Literally, not at all. No, I didn't have no idea I had that. <laughs> oh, my God. And then she, I was like, do you think I have? And she was like, I'd look into it. Like, that. it was literally like that. Stop. And then, yeah, and then I just spent so long on this website, like, trying to work out which psychiatrist I'd go with, their speciality, then I'd leave it for a few months and I'd be like, I could book an appointment. No, I won't. I, and this went and on. And this is one on one, on, isn't it? Isn't of it? Traits, I just yeah. think that's, it should, you know, the procrastination. I'm like, let's mm -hmm. do it. No, let's not do it. Like, yeah. Oh my God. And then I got officially diagnosed at 43. And then it was during that process that my husband was like, but I do that and I do that and I do that. Oh, and so this is how you get the either. Like, he wasn't either. So they were all diagnosed okay. autistic. Kids were then diagnosed ADHD. I then got diagnosed. And then Kelly, my husband's like, I'm going to look into this because I struggle with that. And I, like, if sometimes if I don't feel like I can talk, I just think I'm going to scream. Like, I, or if I can't move, I'm just like, yes. actually feel like I'm going to burst. Right. Oh, my God. That's so interesting. Did you find that your mindset, or at least how you navigated life, changed once you knew that? Yeah, massively. Yeah. And I think what's really interesting to point out is that a lot of women are misdiagnosed with other conditions. So they're misdiagnosed with either bipolar, depression, borderline wow. personality disorder, like really serious things that are then on their medical, you know, records. Yeah. Whereas I was almost the complete opposite. I feel really grateful that my mum was just, do whatever you want to do. So if I look back, it was just me and my mum and um, had a stepdad and my siblings growing up, but like not loads of money and stuff. And she would do, she was like, do every after school club going. So I would literally do squash <laughs> for like a month. Right. right? I would yeah. do tennis for about two months. Disco dancing, I remember at the age of three. Yeah. From, like genuinely, I've tried guitar, <laughs> piano, like Stop. but almost another parent would have probably gone, well, no, no, you stay and doing that now, because that's what we're doing. Where she was like, well, you tried it, that's great. So I don't really think I realised I flitted from thing to thing. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. And I just think she was like, she says, you know, you, she's like, you started speaking at 18 months and you haven't stopped. <laughs> yeah. She thought, God forbid, you, if only you started a yeah. little bit later, yeah. she would have had some more respite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. she's the same. So right. she's like, there's nothing wrong with you. And I'm like, there's literally nothing wrong with me anyway. But she's like, yes. we're the same. And it's right. like, because it's just this high word count, talking over each other, really excitable. That's so interesting. You saying that is hilarious because this was exactly me at school. Right. Um, I, when I tell you, I did every instrument for a year. <laughs> and so I started with the violin, thought oh. I was going to be a real, you know. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I did it for a year and then I went, this is shit. Yeah. I'm over it now. Yeah. My dad was like, oh, right, are you over instruments in general? I said, no, no, no. Just the violin's not for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to play piano now. Okay. He was like... Cool, and it's exactly what you were saying. He is such a, 
real advocate for me of just trying everything. Yeah. He's so supportive. He's not one of these that's like, no, you must do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, it now. You're yeah, sticking he's like, to I it. don't yeah. want you to do things that you hate. That's yeah. rubbish. Yeah. So he would then go, great, piano, do it. Did the piano for a year, you know, yeah. soon enough, was like, this is shit. Yeah. <laughs> not happening. Saxophone. That Ooh, lasted the longest. Right. Um, obviously, I picked the, the biggest instrument for yes. my tiny body. Which is, none of it made sense. Did that for a year and a half. Yeah. And now it makes so much sense because it's, I just couldn't yeah. stay. I, I couldn't keep my... Uh, just... What's the right way? Focus. Yes, focus on that instrument. Or the passion and excitement it's as that. well. And that's the dopamine. Yes. That's the dopamine seeking is right. you go... You know, it's a big joke within the ADHD community that, like, there's, like, a hobby graveyard in everyone's house. Oh, like, my God, uh, yes. I have a sewing machine in my garage that my husband bought me because I was desperate for a sewing machine. And I literally no. made my daughter the world a doll sleeping bag because you just sew, like, that bit and shove a doll inside it. And then my husband... The other day, sleeping bag. Oh, for God's sake. And then my husband literally the other day we were in John Lewis and he was like, look at all the sewing machines. Do you want to add another one to the one in the garage? No, this case is lonely. Stop. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh... I've done like a Reiki course, right? I was like, I'm going to become a Reiki <laughs> healer, right? These are all such random ones as well. What's killing me is there's no train of thought to these. It's like every single, like, that's yeah. hilarious. So I was like, right, I'm going to do Reiki, become, again, this was literally from years ago, and Kelly's like, how did that Reiki healing go for you? But I realised you couldn't talk during Reiki healing, so I was like that. <laughs> so I couldn't talk. Yeah, I yeah, wasn't, yeah. like, allowed to. No. I did a hairdressing course. I mean, You're honestly, these me. are alongside my full-time job of, like... Right. ..presenter, I used to, again, really dopamine-seeking mm -hmm. jobs. Every uh, aromatherapy after evening class. I mean, honest to God. As in, I don't know what's going to come out next. <laughs> That's what's killing me. I'm going to stop now. No, no, it's brilliant, <laughs> but it's exactly the same. I do the exact same thing. And I always, I always said, in this industry... It works and yes. it makes sense because this is that industry we kind of can just do whatever yeah. and at any point be like, guys, I do this now. Yeah. And if you say it with enough conviction, everyone's like, oh, cool, she's a DJ. Yes. <laughs> Great. And I'm like, yeah, I, I hate to say it, I'm a DJ now. And all I've done is bought a, the whole yeah. decks yeah. and for one week I was really excited about Hyper -focus. it. focus. And then I realised that it's actually really bloody hard and it takes yeah. months and months of dedication. Yeah. And I was like... I'm done. <laughs> and I am going to go back to it. But I was like, oh, I think I need to give this a bit of a break. Yeah. I'm shattered. Like, I'm going to come After back to this. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it's so interesting mm. to me. I bought myself a pottery wheel. <laughs> Can I say, that is one of my top ten Can things you... I would love to own. <laughs> right. Let me tell you, don't bother. Have it you got a kiln to go with it, though? No. Right, that, exactly. I'm like, this is an expensive big... This was my issue. OK. So I bought you can... the wheel. How much was that? Completely forgot. Expensive? It, oh, no, it was a mini wheel. Oh, it was okay. one of these mini okay. ones. It was actually, for, it was like a real bootleg version of the real thing. Uh, I was like, let me just start on this yeah, yeah, and really yeah. get to grips with the Because when I'm amazing and have a business... Me. Bought the domain name. Right, right, when I have my own pottery tavern and I'm, and I'm selling them out <laughs> week by week, yeah. this is where I started. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. Didn't really do my research. Just said, I'm going to be a, a pottery sensation. Got it. Influencer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, pottery influencer. Quite niche. <laughs> it's very niche. <laughs> Got it. Realised it was really hard. Then I went, shit, I don't have a kiln. So I just had all of these mini, yeah. really badly done wet pots in, the <laughs> in our outhouse, just slowly Slowly withering easy. away. Yeah. And I was like... I need to stop this. Yeah. Like, I need to stop. I, I feel like I'm on a path to destruction and yeah. just doing all these things. But also, I guess there is a beauty in it because I said, I was speaking to my best mate about this and I was saying, I, I you're just so passionate yes. about lots of stuff. And yeah. I said, I don't think that's a bad thing. I would rather be that than yeah. be unbothered about everything. Yeah. So I guess there's like a balance to be found, isn't there? Isn't yeah. It? And I think also it's working out things you don't like. Like I said that to the right. kids. I'm like, you know, they're 12 and 14. India's 14, so she'll be going into year 10 mm -hmm. and starting GCSEs and stuff. And I'm like, it's about working out the things where you go, yeah, I really wouldn't want to do that. Yes. That's just as important. So I think it's good to try all these things. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes it can be a bit expensive. Yeah. But like, almost, <laughs> there's like, a, you know, we almost need like an aid actually like hobby swap, mm -hmm. don't we? Like a swap shop thing. But I, th I think, yeah, that 100%, there is that hyper-focus. And when you can like really channel it and it's something really positive and amazing, 
like you with a podcast, like whatever right. it is, it's that kind of you go, yeah, actually, mm -hmm. because with this, you've got the dopamine seeking of a different guest each time. You don't yes. know what you're going to get, the conversation. And there's like sort of two kinds of people. My husband often talks about this when we do like neurodiversity training for companies. Two different kinds of people. Some people wake up in the morning and they've got like no coins in this little like treasure chest. Imagine that, right? right? So every time you have an interaction, so I wake up with no coins. So I've had a lovely chat with a taxi driver and it fills my chest. Okay. And then this is wonderful. Other people then have the opposite. So my husband wakes up with a finite amount of coins. <laughs> every time he has, it's true, every time he has an interaction, he gives one away. And if it's a bit more stressful or a uh, more intense interaction, he gives more. So even by two o'clock, three o'clock, it might not be the end of the day, he's run out of coins. He's like, I've got nothing left anymore. The social, and the social battery is gone. Right. So I get my dopamine, I get my, mm -hmm. you know, fill my cup up from meeting people, from chatting whether it's someone random in the street, whether it's doing fun stuff like this, whatever it is, that's how I fill my cup up. Right. See, that's interesting because I, I feel both ends of this. Mm. I feel, as you said, I think to do this job, you kind of have to be that person that yeah. starts with none and then this kind of thing just yeah. fills you up. But I actually feel it on both ends. So I'm interested to know what yeah. you think because I do have it when... It's so weird because I get a lot of gratitude from interactions and they really do fill me. But then I have it often where I'm coming home mm. and I live with three other people, okay. my really close friends, but I have it where I come home and I'm like, I need to sit, even though I'm such an extrovert, yeah. I need to sit in a cold, dark room yeah. and I don't want to interact with any of you right now. Yeah. And me and my best mate, Rika, have got a bit of a... We've got a nice understanding now where I get in. Yeah. And I've, if I've had one of those days, I'll go to her. She goes, hello, how are you? How was this podcast today? What's going on? She wants, like, a full debrief. And yeah. I go, give me 20 minutes. Yeah. See and you I, in a bit. Yeah, see you in a bit. And I go upstairs and I just do this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I put shit TV on, something yeah. that's, like, mind-numbing that I don't really need to yeah. focus on, and I just go... Yeah. And then I go back downstairs and I'm like, fine now, yeah. I'm ready, I, I can really give you a full debrief. Is that... No, is it normal to have both ends? Yeah, and it, okay. it, it's almost part of, if you think of your battery. Yeah. So you're loving it and you've been on your phone all day and your battery's dwindling, so it's like, oh, my God, low right. battery. I need to literally plug the battery in and just recharge for a bit. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I don't often do things in the evening, anything after, like, five, six o'clock. I'm genuinely, because I'm, I'm a bit of a Duracell bunny, so I'm go, go, go. And then the minute I sit down, I'm almost like, oh, my God, I sat down. Yeah. And it might yes. be all that we... And we talk about, it like, running out of words in our house. So we're like, I've run out of... I don't... I've run out of words. I've literally run out of words. And I don't often run out of... But I'm noticing more, because then you get hormonal at my age and perimenopause and all that menopause. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just a whole concophony. But it's, it's anyone with ADHD, naturally, you can't keep going yes, all the time. Right. And almost more energy then exerts, you then need to have that time to recharge. That's why I'm always teaching my ADHD clients, almost just being like, just take that minute. Mm -hmm. Like, have a list. I was telling a client the other day, we came up with this little list of things to recharge your battery mm -hmm. based on energy levels. So if you've got, like, a one-star energy, you're quite low, I always suggest really good TV programmes that you love or podcasts that you want to listen to or music right. that really, like, just chills you. Maybe then there's a two-star might be like getting a bath or doing your nails or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and a three-star might be going for a walk or sitting in the garden doing something. Like, and kind of just working finding out. finding all these little ways to manage it, yeah. basically, and just yeah. bring you back up to that point. Because otherwise you'll burn out. If you keep going, yeah. you can't keep going at that. This has been me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this and has been all that moment. energy. And then you'll find the minute you stop or you go on holiday, you'll end up being ill, you'll get germs, mm -hmm. you'll pick up bugs, and, and you'll end up just going, oh, and you're like, why is it always when I'm taking time off? Or why is it always... Oh, my off? God, this! Yes! Oh, it's like you're inside resume? my brain. <laughs> this, yeah, it's exactly that. Like the minute... I mean... I guess people do say that this is a thing. The minute you stop, yeah. your body goes, yeah. thank God you've rested, and yeah. then you get ill, you pick yeah. something up, because you're immediately like, yeah. it, it wanted to do that the whole time. Yeah. You've kept it going, kind of against its own will. And then the minute you rest, it's exactly what you said. You're like, yeah. I'm sitting here in Marbella, and why am I iller than a dog? Like, yeah. it's, yeah, it's Because that. your body's just gone, oh, my God. Whereas if you then learn to then not be absolutely flat out. So if you mm -hmm. know, for example, you've got, like, a really busy week or a couple of weeks, mm. you then make sure... It's, you know, I feel like a bit like a nana saying that, you know, yeah. not burning it at both ends kind no, of No, but it's true. But in all seriousness, then recharging. Whereas, actually, it then when you unpick your week over the, like, couple of weeks, you go, well, it's no surprise. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the, you know, having ADHD is then... Well, like, when I was diagnosed, the psychologist, the psychiatrist, sorry, said, you've, you have to work five, six times harder than someone else with ADHD, without ADHD. Um... 
to kind of do what other people do. Because, yes. like, I left home three hours ago for this. I literally live in Reading. It's like, it, <laughs> I've got no sense of, Re like... Yes, right. I've got a sense of time, but I'm so worried about being late for things. So all this energy that goes into it. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Which is then the exhausting bit and worrying about where, you know, and I'm quite a chill person. Thankfully, I don't have masses of anxiety or anything mm -hmm. like that, which I'm, I feel really fortunate about because, you know, sometimes it's a it huge could just overlap. cripple you, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. So how many actual types of ADHD are there? OK. Is there, like, a set amount or are there also even more intrinsic ones within those? Like, I imagine I there's so many levels yeah. to it. I, th I think it's really interesting because, obviously, everybody is different. Uh -huh. So, like, if you take my children, they're both autistic and both ADHD. Mm -hmm. They've got me and my husband as parents. We live all live in the same house. Like, their lives are really similar, if that makes sense, yes. in terms of the environment. But they couldn't be more different as really? people because, naturally, they're just different people. So, mm -hmm. yes, they've both got ADHD and they're autistic. And my son often says he's really good at being autistic and India's really good at having ADHD. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Which I love because he's like... I love that. He's just... Well, she's like dopamine and when we go on holiday and this and that. But then with that comes loads of anxiety and loads of other stuff to manage. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, right? Okay. So it's not that there's... Like, it's not that you don't know how... No, it's not that you don't have enough attention. Like, you mm -hmm. can't... You don't know where to focus it on, right? So, you, does that right, make sense? Right, yeah. So, okay. there's not, like, a deficit in attention, but it's just where do I focus oh, that's it? really interesting, because I always did assume it was an actual just, like, inability I, yeah. to focus. Whereas it's not. It's the, where do I look? Where do I start? Fine. I, you know, need a bit of help with that. Mm -hmm. So, then there's... Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, inattentive, mm -hmm. right? And that is what used to be called ADD. Yes, yeah? OK. But people still use that, but that's not been... Like, you haven't been able to be diagnosed with that for over 10 years. I can't even remember off the top oh, of my really? head now. A really long time, but people still go, oh, well, it's ADD. Yes. Right? So that's the inattentive. That is quite often, is a bit of a cliche, but quite often more girls and women mm. looking um, out the window, away with the fairies, you know, from a classroom perspective, girls in class, right. come on, you know, what's going on? Sort of, you know, not present, not necessarily being there, easily distracted. There's a big joke within the ADHD community, like, squirrel, like, oh, my God. Oh, like, God, yeah. Please, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bug, ooh, like a yeah. toddler. You know, and you're like, ooh. Geez, yeah, like yeah. Me. Then there's ADHD combined, mm -hmm. which is both... ADHD inattentive, and then ADHD hyperactive. So it makes more sense to start with ADHD, the hyperactive element. Ah. So if you were to, like, go to a psychiatrist and say, I want to be diagnosed, you'd fill out a criteria and you have nine questions. One is about hyperactivity and one is about inattentive, right? So the inattentive right. is, are you easily distracted? Is it, you know... The way with the fairies, whatever it is. It doesn't say that on the form. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Away with, <laughs> away with medical, the fairies, not a medical very term. much present. Yeah, yeah tell no, me which one. It's not a medical term. <laughs> right, and then there's the hyperactive side. High word count, like, like just gesticulating a lot, mm -hmm. not able to sit still, fidgeting, maybe toe-tapping. I, I realise I click my fingers a lot, kind of oh, generally right. just moving. Um, and outwardly hyperactive. But it's worth noting you can be hyperactive internally as well, right? So my husband is diagnosed combined, as am I, which I'll explain in a minute. That's the third bit, where you're inattentive and hyperactive. If you met him, he's the least hyperactive person ever. Right, but internally, Inside, so much stop. is going on. Stop. Yeah. Constantly thinking, oh, my God, this, that, the other 100,000 things going on. Whereas I am wow. externally hyperactive, but I'm both, so I'm the combined. So... For an adult to be officially diagnosed, you need to have had the symptoms and traits before you're 12. I think that's really important to remember. Mm -hmm. And it's got to negatively impact your life. OK, so if you're just swanning along going, oh, God, I'm away, I'm here, there and everywhere, and I'm hyperactive and I talk a lot, but I'm fine, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't affect me, that's absolutely fine. It's the negatively impacting your life, right? So then the, the combined, I scored... Nine out of nine for hyperactive. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> eight, eight I love out that of nine. for you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I finally did well on a test. Yeah, yeah. In Nailed it. it. <laughs> Math. 100%. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, literally. I got an a in hyperactive ADHD. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Um, Write that did. down, teacher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. And then um, and then got the eight out of nine in the inattentive. So okay. I was told I was severely combined ADHD. I hate word severe because what does that mean? But you then might you almost get someone immediately else. think it's like a negative connotation yeah. to yeah. that, don't you? Yeah, so uh, so that's like the diagnostic criteria. There's like a, a, you know, a form you would fill out. So I always think if anyone is listening to this and thinking, oh, my God, this really sounds familiar or I really mm. relate, 
then what you would do is I always say like look online, Google the traits and the symptoms and just start making a little note because mm -hmm. you need almost that anecdotal evidence of the fact that we've lost our garage key, don't know where it is, we've got a downstairs loo that needs fixing, <laughs> can we get a plumber around? Been out without it for six months because we have another. Yeah. But you don't need... It's just stuff like that. Oh, God! Yeah, this kind of <laughs> right, procrastination yeah. is like... Like a really good example is years ago, I won this bizarre little wooden go-kart thing for my son, right? <laughs> really cute. It's been in the garage for years. It's massive because a little bit of the wheel pinged off. This is such a good example of ADHD. Pinged off. And me and my husband are like, we'll get that sorted. We finally did it a couple of months ago. It's been six years. I worked out the piece cost one pound twenty from Halfords. And it took like... my husband three minutes to fix. My son's too big for the go kart now, but that's not the yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I, I can't believe my you life. actually still did it. It's five foot six. He's only twelve. He's like legs are up And there. now he's like, well, better late than never. I'm like, I'm like get on that. Like that's yeah. you know, six years in the waiting. But that's such. I just thought that is ADHD in a nutshell. Right. Just this absolute like waiting and this procrastination, mm -hmm. but. If you think you have ADHD, start making a note of things, but you'll also need evidence from someone else. It's called an informant form, which I don't know what always makes me laugh, an informant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a okay. snitch and a yeah, snake. Yeah, 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 snitches, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it's one of those where you then have to have evidence from someone else. So people often go for a parent, but I was thinking with my mum, my a bit older, and I was a bit like, Phew. I remember all these stories from when I was younger of all right. these things I did, but I didn't think were um, impulsive at the time. When I look back now, I'm like, oh, OK. So I made a note of all of those. And then my husband was my informant for the form. Right. With him, you know, we've been together from when I was like early 20s. They know you inside out, yeah. don't they? And then, but I needed that evidence from before I was 12. Whereas if you haven't got that and right. you just go, oh, like people are like, oh, you've got baby brain. I was like, the kids are like eight and 10. Like, I don't have baby yeah, brain. Yeah, they are like, not babies anymore. No, no. Like, you know, so, but I think often it's this outward, you know, I reply to messages instantly because if I don't, I never will. <laughs> Oh, I, I need to speak to you about Did this, I... actually. Mm. No, see, I don't do that. OK. And it cr actually cripples. I mean, yeah, she knows. Molly said, I'm aware. Um, I Messages for me are the most overwhelming thing okay. ever. In what I, way? Um, I just look at them all yeah. and I see them piling up and I know that if I slowly start to make my way through them, it mm. will get better. Like, yeah. I'm very That's aware of That's the rational it, bit. But I can't. No. So I look at them and I go, oh, that's so lovely. You haven't heard from that person in ages. And just, no. And then <laughs> it plays, does it play on your mind? Oh, my, I, I think about it constantly. Yeah. So I'll be, I remember I, this actually happened and it actually comes at the detriment to my relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and friendships, stuff. yeah. I had a big, I had it out with my best mate um, a few months ago because she was like, you just don't reply to me. Yeah. And I said, oh, my God, like, there is no part of me that doesn't want to yeah. or that doesn't care for you mm. to do that. Yeah. It's that I physically just can't. I see the messages. Mm. They overwhelm me. Yeah. And then it gets to a point where they're, they're so piled up that I go, I can't reply to them now. It's been yeah. three weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't then say to yeah. the person, you know, that's asked me, are you free next week? Yeah, and you're like, two uh, weeks later. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. well, now I just won't say anything. Yeah. Because I think... And then it's almost like this avoidant yeah. thing where I just leave it and they just mount up, mount yeah. up, mount up. And then I find myself constantly, like, apologising to yeah. people when I see them out. Yeah. I'm like, God, I remember you messaged yeah. me the other day. But really sorry. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's the ADHD paralysis. So you right. almost get this paralysed feeling of, like, I know I need to do this. Yes. I've got a really great example at the moment. I was like, meant to be, I'm having a clear out with moving mm -hmm. cows. This woman, I posted some things for free on Marketplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's messaged me because I've not got them out of the loft and I can't cope. And all I want to do is email and message her and go, I've got ADHD, I'm not being rude. She now thinks I'm ghosting her. It's like a whole... And in my head, all I yes. can think about is this random woman who I don't know on Facebook. <laughs> That's hounding you for her good. She was going to get some pictures in a mirror and now I'm like, oh, my God, but it's all you can think about. And yes. That's, and that's the point of the, like, the negatively impacting you bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're getting all these messages and you're a bit like, I don't really give a shit, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't right. bother me that's then really different. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're literally going, I'm not a bad friend, I'm not... And, yes. and it, like you said, it can massively impact friendships mm -hmm. and relationships. And you're like, I'm not... I, it's not that I don't care. Yeah. It's, it's the absolute opposite. It's all I'm thinking about. Yes. Like, it's all I'm thinking about. It's exactly that. But it's that. the ADHD paralysis. So my... I literally had this... In fact, yesterday, this is such a relevant example. I had a friend message me and said, we've got... Um, a really nice, like, holiday home somewhere. We're gathering a few mates. Wondered if you wanted to come for a few days. I remember seeing the message yeah. and immediately thinking, 
God, my schedule at the moment is a bit all over the place. I really want to do this, but yeah. I um, can't even think about this right now. There's already like a million tabs in the brain. Yeah. So I was like, um, right, I've put a pin in it mentally, yeah. not said anything to him. No. Then I heard from another mate a week or two weeks later, he was like, so and so's a bit annoyed at you. You've just not said anything. Yeah. Like, and yeah, he's yeah, invited yeah, yeah. you on holiday. I was like, shit, I know. Yeah. And what's weird is I thought about it every day. Yeah. Yeah. And then I bumped into him yesterday randomly and my first thought was, I've still not said anything and yeah, now I'm yeah, here yeah. in real life. Yeah. I've got to say something. And what I said, happened? Well, I said to him, by the way, so aware that I haven't said anything about this holiday. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for yeah. inviting me. Really want to come. It's just don't know what's going on with work at the minute and that's mm. why I didn't reply because I yeah. didn't want to say yes or no. Yeah. And they know what I'm like. Yeah. It's kind of this and thing you're of, busy and don't worry. Yeah. Like, we'd love for you to come either way, blah, blah. But I was like, God... This is, it is getting to a point where it's kind of like crippling me because I don't yeah. really know what to do about it. Yeah. I, I think the thing is as well in that instance is, so it's not just that they've sent a message going, oh, hey, mm -hmm. how are you? What are you up to? They've gone, oh, so in your head you're like, right, well, now I've got to work out my diary, right? There's X, Y and Z going on. I've mm -hmm. got this campaign, I've got the podcast, whatever. Then you're like, right, well, then I've got to work out, like, get in there, what I'd pack, whatever yeah. else. What, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. There's a million and one things rather than you just going, yay, Let's go. I can come. That, that sounds, sounds fantastic. Like, yeah. Whereas someone else, maybe they're just working nine to five in an office and mm -hmm. they're just doing their thing and they're like, yeah, actually, I can work that out. I can take some. Other. Whereas you'll go in, there are so many moving parts. Yes. And that's what it is. And then the, with the messages you were saying, like, all build up because then you message back and then I saw something the other day, like a little <laughs> meme, and it was like, and then they reply and you're like, oh, this that. is wonderful. But yes. now I'm. <laughs> yes. And now there's a conversation. And I even and think like, that sometimes I think, oh, I'd love to reply to that, but then they're going to reply. Yeah. And then we're back to square one. Yes. <laughs> so we're like, just a bit further down. Yes, but maybe, I better just leave it because yeah. otherwise I'm not going to get a response. Yeah. Then brilliant. Like, I don't like, have to reply. Thank God for yeah. that. But like quite often with my clients, what I say is almost like have a little line or something that you can just reply. Not like an mm. out of office, but almost that kind of like, thanks so much. That sounds amazing. We'll get like back the holiday. To you type thing. Yeah, I've just got loads to think about. But give me, you know, remind me if, if mm -hmm. you, um, you know, if it's happening kind yeah. of thing. Let, let me know. Almost like it's almost like kind of yeah, a bit like asking for like a reasonable adjustment. Yeah, you know what I mean. Almost okay. be like if I've not replied within a certain time, will you follow up, chase me? Yes. Like not put it back on them a bit, but almost like if it you know if it was another condition, someone would support you. With I, that. Yeah, Does it's that almost like asking for help in a Sorry. way. Yeah, because I always I always think this with my mates. I think please, please do remind me. Yeah, and it's what you were saying. I guess that put it back on them thing. Yeah. Sometimes I think. God, am I just, like, lumping this responsibility yeah. onto someone else when really I should just get my shit together and do yeah. it? But I guess it is, if you see it in that way of yeah. just asking for support, yeah. basically, from your mates of, like, this might Bit of a jog your brain. memory. Or... Yeah, please let me know. But would you mind if they asked for you for that? It, as no. in, it, that's a bad example because you might not be the best person <laughs> yeah. to mind it. Yeah, agreed. But with Nothing would else, ever get to... <laughs> no. We'd all just Terrible sit there problem. at home, like... <laughs> No one's going on any holiday yes, ever. Exactly. But like, if it was something else and they asked for help, right? What would what would your reaction be? I'd be like, of course. Like, if it was something, especially yeah. like an invite to somewhere yeah. or something, I'd be like, yeah, I want you to come. I yeah. will remind you. You know, yes. blah blah blah. Yeah, that's so true. Oh, I like that way of thinking of it. I'm yeah. gonna keep a mental yeah. note of that. I think it's about being kind to yourself, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's what I found. Having been diagnosed later in life, I'm now like, yeah, so like I've got a manic next few weeks and it's just crazy. And mm. I'm just like, I'm so sorry, I can't do that. Can I push that back? And I feel bad, you know, if I'm doing that. But actually, I'm like, I literally need to also be aware that otherwise I'm going to burn out. And I was yeah. in this weird, like, cycle. Burnout's quite an extreme word and, like, there's a whole thing to be officially diagnosed with sort of burnout almost. But I was on that almost, like, cycle yeah. of I'd get to the weekend and I'd be knackered and my kids would be like, but I mean, I say knackered. I mean, like, not moving off the sofa. Right, like, really? You know, just literally, like, oh, or my God. Like, mentally just gone. Literally just done. And my daughter would be like, you're not doing anything. Like, you're not fine. You're not doing anything with us at the weekend. You right. almost get... And then, oh, I'd be better again, whatever that looks like, on the Monday, because I kind of have to be. So I kind of had to, like, swap some things around in my home mm -hmm. life to make sure... In my work life to make sure that my home life was more of a balance. Because otherwise you do just end up with this... Yes. Like, burnout is quite severe, but almost on the path of burnout. Mm hmm What I also wanted to ask you was... Do you think, you know, I feel like ADHD is is so, as I said, it's talked about so much. Yeah. I see so many people being like, oh, God, that's the ADHD in me, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. but undiagnosed. Yeah. And do you think that that's a growing issue, that everyone is kind of just 
diagnosing themselves because I, I've put my hands up I've absolutely done yeah. that and I have no idea if that's what I've got yeah. but I've obviously as you said read a few bits here and there yeah. constantly yeah, yeah, yeah. heard what the traits are and been yeah. like that's me yeah so I've always gone through life being like oh god yeah I'm chronically ADHD so like ADHD. yeah almost yeah, yeah, like yeah. blaming things on it yeah um do you think that that's a growing problem it's a really good question, and I think there are a number of reasons why people can't get diagnosis. So, mm -hmm. financially, right. the waiting lists are so crazy long. In some areas, it's seven to ten years for an ADHD diagnosis via the NHS. Seven to ten mm. years? <gasps> Which is just insane. Is that just because of the, the sheer, the sheer demand? Right. Yeah. And then it's kind of come over from like left over from COVID, which we're now four years, you know, we went into lockdown four and a mm -hmm. half years ago now. But again, I mean, I'm. Was it four and a half years ago? Yeah. But there's like three of us, well, all four of us. Bloody hell. I know. Time blindness. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> like four, four of us, you know, me and my family, we were all diagnosed during then because that's when we had time to think and sit and go, oh, okay, like this mm -hmm. is what's going on. Um, so I think people do self-diagnose. I think I have to say with autism, I think it um, makes a lot more sense to self-diagnose. Um, whereas ADHD, I do think there can be misunderstanding where people go, oh, my God, I'm so ADHD. Mm -hmm. my keys are going, where's my phone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like... Is it crippling you? Is it debilitating? Is it right. is it X, Y, and Z? Was it there before you Have you, you just been clumsy that day and forgot yeah. your keys? Or is life just so busy? Think about it, like, with social media and messages and pinging and everything is just, like, mm. emails and there's no stopping, is there? Mm -hmm. There's no, like... So, actually, naturally, life's going to be busy. You're going to forget stuff. You're going to... Because we almost can't keep going at this level mm -hmm. without some things dropping. So... I personally, for myself, really wanted to get an official diagnosis. I think that was really important to then, you know, I'm an ADHD coach, so I think it 100% made yeah. sense that came after that, um, my training and things like that. But we were running the Neurodiversity Consultancy. We run Perfectly Autistic together, so we train organisations about understanding neurodiversity in the workplace, how to support their colleagues, asking for reasonable adjustments, all those kind right. of things. So I think for me and my husband, it was really important for us to get official diagnosis. But I think you can look on TikTok and, you know, it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. But, yes. but also what I've noticed, um, a client was asking about this the other day. They said, but I've been reading about that. And that, to me, sounds like an autistic trait that they were talking about. And I think what you're finding is there's a lot of ADHD influencers now, right? That's the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But actually, I've seen a couple who are now having to go, and I think I might be autistic as well. And so what they're talking about... I'm thinking, to me, right. that sounds like an autistic trait more than an ADHD trait. But to them, because they I think people find ADHD more accepting, much more accepting than yes. so. If I say that my husband's autistic, you literally get people go, oh. You go, oh, God, oh, wow. And they go, oh, sorry. Oh, like, no yes. one knows what to say. Right? Yes. You go ADHD and they go, oh, my God, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, same. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, same, same. <laughs> Talk a million miles an hour and lost my keys today. Like, And it's like, what? It's that, it, and, and I think that's the thing. And that's why I'm saying um, sort of, a bit earlier about the women being mis misdiagnosed with bipolar, mm. borderline personality disorder, like all these really serious conditions that there is on their medical record, that's not actually true. They've actually got ADHD or they're autistic. Right. And I think that's why, personally, I think if you can get officially diagnosed, you can like go to your doctor and you can ask for right to choose, it's called, so mm -hmm. it's free. There is even a really long waiting list for that now, but even if you paid to go privately, Wow. You can, there's still like a really long wait mm -hmm. now. And then if you get medication, and I think this is the crucial bit, is people want the medication. So people are like, oh my God, me. And actually, medication only works if you're then putting all these other things into place. Like medication is not the be all and end all. Of course. At all. Yeah. You've got to then put all these other things into place. Is when a lot of parents are like, their kids are, are autistic, you know, from what they're talking about rather than having ADHD, but like, oh, my son's not autistic. Oh, God, no. Oh, they've yes. got ADHD. Because we can manage that. They can, right. You know, it's on TikTok, it's on social media, isn't it cute It's funny. more palatable, but it's... I think that's what it is. It's like an easy in. Mm -hmm. I always say it's like a sort of gateway. Your yes, condition. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so it, mad to think that we would yeah. say that there is a gateway for it, but there is. Yeah. It kind of feels like you can cope with that. Okay, so going off from that, we spoke at the beginning about how there are so many kind of branches to neurodiversity. Yeah. And obviously, as you said, it's so hard because so many overlap, which is yeah. why we get this thing, as we said, on TikTok and influencers that are saying, I'm this, I'm that. But mm -hmm. it's so easy to have misinformation in that because there's so much overlap that you might actually be something else, but you've yes. self-diagnosed yourself as this. Yeah. So how much overlap is there with these conditions? Yeah, I think that's such a good question. I think 
If you're neurodivergent, I always think of it, you have like a neurodivergent brain. So mm -hmm. the chances are, I think it's something like 60 to 70%. If you have one condition, you will have another, right? Right. So I don't self-diagnose as I'm dyscalculic, which is the maths. It's like the maths version of dyslexia. Mm -hmm. But I would... I failed my maths UCC three times, but it's not even just, for example, with dyscalculia. It's then, you know, you get your one-time passcode on your phone for your shopping when you're paying yes. with a card. And I'm literally like, don't know what those numbers mean. Can't <laughs> compute. Really? So it's almost like a numbers dyslexia. You right. Then, so my daughter's then got dyspraxia as well, which is like a coordination condition. Uh -huh. So she finds it really difficult to, like, judge um, spaces and she's... Distance. Really and... distance and quite um, sort of poor spatial awareness. But then you then often have, with a neurodivergent brain, a lot of the conditions overlap. Right. Does that make... And a lot of the traits, there can be an overarching theme. Mm -hmm. But actually, so you can end up... I sort of did a slide a while ago. I was talking at the Expo last year and someone took my slide and then shared it on LinkedIn and going, like, neurodiversity bingo, how many of these have I got? Right, and yeah. I, and I think that's where almost people think, oh, my God, there's, you're just collecting labels. It's like... Actually, no, because there's such a huge overlap. Mm -hmm. So you can be autistic, ADHD, dyslexic, or you might be dyslexic, dyspraxic, yeah. dyscalculic. You might have Tourette's, you might have OCD. So it's, they can all overlap. So right. it, this is why I personally think if you can get officially diagnosed, it's really important just so that you're, you know, understanding and accepting of yourself mm -hmm. and, and having the right knowledge. Because, like, as an ADHD coach, if I was coaching someone who thought they had ADHD and they were dyslexic, they're naturally going to have different challenges. Right. It's going to be a theme running through, uh -huh. but they're going to have different challenges because the conditions are different. Yes, and then I guess you can better manage these symptoms in your life and yeah. then, you know, find, I guess, coping mechanisms in a yeah. way and different things that you can do to manage them. I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I never got properly diagnosed mm. because it was like you said, I would Google it, fall down that rabbit hole, yeah. and then, as you said, there is a term for everything. Yeah. And it was like ADD, ADHD, but then you might have a bit of this and then, and then I'm seeing neurodivergent, this, that and the other. And I was like, oh, my God, like, I'm, I'm finding kind of snippets of myself mm. in loads of these. Yeah. Then I was like, so what am I? And, yeah. then, and then you just go, Christ, Too much. putting that to bed. Too I'm much, just, yeah. just going to be yeah. myself and hope people yeah. like it. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't be asked with all this because yeah. it almost feels, I think, again, that overwhelm. Yeah. Because, because you are that yeah. way inclined. There's an overwhelm in even looking at all of it and yeah. just trying to see what you might be. And, and also I think it's worth pointing out that, like, so you can have traits, mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, within the autism spectrum, you've got... It's, it's called a triad of impairments, which is such a horrible term. But right. to be officially diagnosed, you need to have enough traits. It's not symptoms, because autism is not a medical condition. Yeah, I said... You know, exactly, no, no, even that. Uh, I no, said symptoms. No, but do you know what's really interesting is people with ADHD say symptoms. So I find it... it Blows my right. mind. So with autism, you talk about traits. So I quite often with ADHD say traits and symptoms. Yes. Because, so it's it's so with um, within the autism spectrum, yes, you can have challenges with communication or rigid thinking or take things really literally. Mm. But you need to have challenges and enough of them in these three areas. Right. So this is where you get people going. I'm a little bit autistic. I'm a little bit ADHD. I'm not a little bit pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. Right. Yeah? I'm not a little bit diabetic. I'm okay. diabetic or I'm not. Does that make sense? Yes. That's kind of like you're in or you're out. Okay. okay? So you're either, to be diagnosed, <coughs> you've either got ADHD or you haven't got ADHD. Yeah, you can't really, be like... you can't just say... Because I can't have, like, a so little much. bit of ADHD. Right. Well, you've got traits, mm -hmm. but you obviously don't have enough to be diagnosed because if you did, for the two... I keep doing lots of just... Yeah, I love, triangle. I love and, this. And this. This is great. It's like we're playing charades. <laughs> I know. Bill, this is the two <laughs> lists I'm thinking of, the inattentive and the hyperactive. Yeah. Little dance routine. Yeah, it's brilliant. Like, and then you've got the nine criteria, the nine points of each of these for the inattentive mm. and the hyperactive. So you need to reach at least five in both of those. And as I said, it's got to negatively impact your life and be there before you were 12. Right. So it, it's not just... And there needs to be evidence as yes. well. Because I hear it from loads of people going, my children at school mask loads, which means they just... Yes. You know, a real conscious effort of, of mimicking others and looking and, and seeing what is acceptable behaviour and what we say and what we don't mm -hmm. say. And that's exhausting. So then that way, if there's not evidence from a second setting... Right. In, for children, this is... You know, so for me as an adult, I've got so many stories of when I push my neighbour in the pond and mm. I lock my maths teacher in the cupboard. But I've never had a detention in ever. I taught my way out of them. Never had a detention. Oh, my God, that's me. Yes, that was so me. I still went to uni. I did my A levels. Went right. to uni. Really hard work, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't come easily. I was told not to bother to go to uni, don't do this. Don't. But I was like, I'm going clubbing in Leeds, and that's that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like, Women no, after my own heart. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. 
failed my first semester. We don't talk about that. But, but we don't need to know, talk about but, it. But I worked so hard to get yeah. there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I got a 2 2, and that's fine. But I got like, that took all my energy. That was right. all I could do, you know. Yeah. So you get a lot of people that go, oh, but you've been to uni or you've done this or you've done mm -hmm. that. So whatever success it's like in life. And you're like, yeah, yeah, but it took so much energy right. to get there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is it also really hard, I guess, in young adults because you're still developing yeah. as a human? So yeah. I, I always think, is it not so hard to kind of really identify these traits and diagnose them for that yeah. reason? Because it's like you're also just learning Working how to navigate life. the yeah. world. So, like, sometimes I think certain traits that I may have thought, probably if I look back now at my teen years, mm. you know, like these impulse kind of yeah. decisions yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm, I'm a real person for that. And this, um, I was reading a bit up on these impulsive decisions, but also dangerous decisions. And, yeah, and I'm, I am a risk taker. I'm yeah. just like... Oh, who cares? If I yeah. die, I die. I'm going to yeah. do it. And I'm like, going to die happy. Yes, exactly. Here we go. And I'm like, part of me always thought, was that just because I was growing up? Yeah. And was figuring out, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. are these actually those traits? So is it hard to differentiate on that side? Yeah, it, it can be. And I think it's, it's really important to also talk about, like, executive functions. So that's, like, how your brain processes, like, you know, memory and organisational mm. skills and things like that. And if you're neurodivergent you've got a deficit of about 30 to 40% in age, right? So if someone's listening to this and they're 21, let's say, mm -hmm. and they've got ADHD, their executive function challenges are about 30 to 40%. So they're going to be like about 12 or 13 year old. No, about, I'm, see, I'm so bad at maths, about 14, 15. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're 18 and going off to uni and your child's neurodivergent, it's like sending a 12-year-old off in terms of their executive function, really? their skills, their organisation, which is probably why they're going to drink too much, they're not going to cook, they're probably not going to make it to lectures on time, they're going to be at... Because you're kind of sending off like a 12-year-old brain in an 18-year-old's body. Wow. So there's loads of challenges. So you've got that, you're right, partly it's the growing up and like, well, this is life. Mm. But then also you'll talk to other people and they'll be like, no, I wasn't like that at all. Right. So the ADHD side of things 100% affects... The, like I said, the executive function, so they're making good choices. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whatever that looks like. Right. And I think that's why you quite often get quite a lot of people who've got ADHD who are sort of a bit younger in personality, but it's not the Peter Pan effect, but just that yes. kind of, like, never quite grown up. That can be, I guess, brain... taken as mistaken yes. as immaturity yes. or, you know, oh, God, you're just floating through life yeah. being immature and not really growing up. And yeah. It's like, no, actually, this is actually my brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is just who I am. Right. And it's like with me and my husband, I say, you know, we're literally married. We've been together, so like I said, since I was like 24. We're now married with kids and got a house and like loads of pets and dogs. And Yeah. But yeah, we're still just as stupid as we were when we were 24 and 26. Right. Like, do you know what I mean? We, yeah. We've not grown up. We've just got this life. But you know, <laughs> how we parent. Oh my God, we've got this life now we've that we're like, responsible of. We've, we've like kept two humans alive yeah. for like 14 years. Right. I'm like... I'd say absolutely good for you yeah. then. They got to their first birthday for both of them, for India, and we looked at each other and we high-fived and we, we kept her alive for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. I love, oh, God, if that's not going to be me, me and my future husband, <laughs> I don't know wh what is. Because you're like, oh, my God, look at us. Yeah. Up. It's like, you know, and I think this executive function, the brain just develops later on. There's loads of studies and I quite often get mm -hmm. them going, cite your sources and people get really, like, funny about it. So go off and do some research if you want to look into it. Yeah, It's really interesting. But the executive function is the organisation, the planning, the, the working memory. Mm -hmm. so that's that's why if you've got, like, like I said, an 18-year-old going off to uni, the 12-year-old side, they're not going to be able to get organised. They're not they're just not equipped. They're not equipped. Yeah. So my son's 12, he's like five foot six, but he's like eight years old with executive function. So I still <laughs> right. help him do his teeth, for example, if he needs it, or get right. his clothes out. Whereas someone else would be like, he's 12, can he not do that himself? No, actually, he finds that some days mm -hmm. are better than others, and he'll be like, oh, no, it's OK, I got my clothes out today. And I'm like, well done. Mm. And, and also... Growing up having ADHD, whether you know it or not, diagnosed or not, by the time a child is 12, they'll have had 20,000 more negative comments than their peers or siblings or, like... Um, just kids. about their behaviour. Negative, just sit still, stop, you know, being away with the fairies, concentrate, oh, my God, you're so stupid, whatever. Do you think that's... And that's so damaging, though, isn't it? Yeah. To grow up with those comments yeah. because eventually those stick and then you and start then you grow figuring... up and then you work with people going... Why are they so sensitive? Why are they not very confident? Why right. these people become adults and you've had all these, all these negative comments? Mm -hmm. So we're like completely the other way, and we're like, oh my god, you're amazing, well done. That. Yes, oh my god, yes. you did your teeth. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Like, whoa, let's go so party. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, I know, we're great. Thank you. Yeah, like, oh, bless. Because I'm yeah. so, like, instilling any negativity mm -hmm. of this, this kind of, like, you're too much, you're a bit, you know, stop talking, stop... The, 
that can like whatever age you are. You, totally. you know, you've got all these you've got all these comments from teachers and whoever and parents and you know, family members mm. and judging and all of that. So you then grow up and you've got people probably watching now going, oh, my God, I had all those negative comments. Yeah. I didn't know what they were for and I didn't know why. And now you're trying to unpick them as an adult and you try to have relationships right. and life and friendships and you may be not as confident or you compensate in other ways. Yeah, and I guess that that can be overwhelming in itself because you've you've gone your whole life kind of thinking a certain way or thinking, yeah. this is just me. Yeah, or believing those things yes. that people are telling and you. and then all of a sudden you're like, actually, there may be a reason for this. Yeah. And I've been way too hard on myself for yeah. all these years. Yeah. God, this is fabulous. Also, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about, um, and we'll tread carefully here because it's okay. about me medication side. Yeah, 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 that's fine. So I had a housemate that, it, we used to joke about this a lot, he blamed everything under the sun on ADHD. Okay. To the point where I was like, this is your entire personality. Yeah. As in, I feel like you could slip up in something and he'll go, ADHD. Yeah, and yeah. And I'll go, right, but this, you can't... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't really get away with everything yeah. by saying this. Can't commit this crime. Yes. And then be like, oh, ADHD. Yeah, 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 kill a man. Sorry and say, Do you know that. what, buddy? ADHD so is right. So impulsive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad day. Life on the edge, danger. <laughs> and I just said, God, at what point does it stop? And I remember we were speaking and he got on medication. Yeah. And it was, it was like a big house experiment. Yeah. I remember he came was home it? and he was like... I'm on ADHD meds, I've got properly diagnosed, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, he paid a lot of money to yeah. do it. So we were all so intrigued. We were like, wow. Like can't, invested Yeah, in can't journey. wait to see how this goes. And I remember the first two days, he was like to me, I feel like I'm on crack. And I said, right. what? And he was like, I am like a, a Duracell bunny. I'm everywhere. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then he said, it settled. Mm. And he was like, I feel... Amazing. I've yeah. got so much done. It's almost as if someone's deleted all the tabs from my search bar. Yeah. And now there's just one clear one. Ash, I can't tell you enough. If you feel crippled by this, yeah. you need to do this. And I remember thinking, this is all I want to do. Mm. But there was always a part of me, and I've had a lot of chats with people about this, that made me think, will going on medication for ADHD dim my sparkle yeah because i was like i am a performer that relies mm. on mm. kind of this scatty brain to yeah. come up with yeah these ideas for for what i do as a career and i remember thinking am i going to take this pill and, and be and, yeah and be like this yeah, yeah and, yeah. and yeah. i was like oh my god i'm going to take adhd meds i'm not going to be funny yeah I, I, i'm going to be you're like shit and boring <laughs> and, and i'm going to have no career yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. no one's going to watch the podcast yes exactly yeah. my podcast is going to go yeah. to part yeah and i was like is that a common misconception about going on medication for adhd yeah. of almost it completely changing your personality in a way so again everyone's different and it's really interesting so i've had really really positive stories about mm -hmm. medication negative ones as well so for transparency i don't take medication fine i was told i should which i don't know how i feel about that the psychiatrist is like you've got severe combined adhd i really would try medication and i'm like okay and you're like actually my body my choice so yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. but yeah. actually what it was for me was that i two things you it's, there's a there's a period of called tritation, where you get in the balance right. And I right. genuinely was like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, That's me. how ADHD is that? That's me. I don't have time. I've and got I was not like, got any time for that. It can take a couple of weeks to get the balance right. And I'm genuinely like, I'm looking after my autistic and ADHD kids who are amazing, but I'm like, yes. you know, busy. I'm running the business with my husband. Yeah. I'm being, I'm like, I literally don't have time for that. I don't and have time to have the zoomies no, for three exactly. weeks. Wait, so <laughs> it? it can be like, where it just, you're like, oh, okay, I can right. feel low or whatever. But there's, there's four different types of medication and three are appetite suppressors, right? And the reason I'm mentioning mm. that, some people love that. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. I'm me, it goes on it some tomorrow. People, <laughs> some people love that. But equally, if you're on the much slimmer side, so my mm -hmm. son has got eating disorders as part of his autism, right. so has my daughter, we don't, I wouldn't then want them on these medications. That could negatively just enhance negative. those things. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to mention that. Also, some people have it, and it's just, I coach a number of people who are literally like, it's amazing. I've now, right. you know, and this medication shortage, which is huge, I don't know if you've heard of it, there's an ADHD medication shortage. Yes, what is that about? There's, there's literally not enough just medication. Just <laughs> Genuinely, not because so many people are being um, prescribed it, as in so many people are being um, diagnosed, but also there's genuinely a shortage in the pills and medication Fine. being made. 
So then what you're having is people genuinely are like, um, you know, losing their jobs because of it, relationships are breaking up because they are relying on this medication. I can't think of any other condition where they're like, oh, you've got arthritis. Oh, sorry, your medication's not available. Crack on. It just wouldn't happen. It just it's, doesn't it's, happen. It's right. ridiculous. Some people say it's like political. There's a whole load of different things going on. Uh -huh. I don't know if you've ever seen the film Limitless with Bradley Cooper. Yes. Oh, my God. Right. The, right. That, right. The, oh. That's exactly what my mate said he felt like. Oh, my God. Because that's... If he, he said he, if it he isn't took that, a limitless pill and yeah. it, it was like he was just like, I've done everything today and I'm, yeah. I'm the most productive version of yeah. myself. Yeah. What you need to then be careful with that is then the burnout because I've right. got my, some clients who are like, and now I can't stop hyper-focusing, which is great in some situations, but actually... I actually cannot stop always. Mm -hmm. Then also you have medication. Some medication is almost like not quite eight to five in terms of the day. So then it wears off. And my concern was it would be like a reverse hangover. You know, and you're yes. really hungover. Almost like a weird come down yeah. from and, and, being so high. Yeah, and then you're like, oh my God. And, and the noise in my head is so loud and so busy. If it's then not there anymore during the day and then it comes back, is it going to be louder and, and busy? Yes. That was what I was worried about. But I get the dull and the sparkle thing. So people can try it. And because it, it goes in and out of your system, mm -hmm. people try it and go, oh, my God, I know some people's kids who have tried it and they're all, it got them through the GCSEs, but their children didn't feel the same at the time Fine. in terms of zombified them slightly. Other people who are like, it's amazing. Right. So I think with medication, it's such an important topic to discuss because mm. I think people go, oh, my God, it's either going to be life-changing, and it 100% it can be. Yes. And like I said, literally, with the with the shortage, there are people losing jobs and mm -hmm. there's a higher suicide rate with people with ADHD and neurodiversity wow. conditions. So I think it's, it's worth bearing all of that in mind. So I think if people want to try it, they need to really look into it, talk to a proper mm. psychologist, be officially diagnosed. Obviously, you can't access it otherwise. Otherwise, but also if you're looking at a diagnosis, look at shared care because what mm -hmm. can happen is people are being diagnosed privately, they're getting the medication privately, and their GP, NHS GP, isn't taking that care on, and they've got a bill of 300 quid a month for their medication. Yes, which this is what my mate had, and yeah. I remember um, such a scare for me with the medication side of things was what you were saying of I, I'm I'm not a bit I'm a real I'm one of those people that's like drink a glass of water and everything will go away. Yeah, I never yeah, take yeah. anything for anything. Yeah. So I literally thought, God, the last thing I want to do is feel reliant on this yeah. medication to live my life. Yeah. And I remember seeing my housemate go through this and the medication was so expensive, he was doing it mm. all privately. Mm. And then with this shortage, it must have been because of that, he couldn't get hold of his yeah. pills. Yeah. And he said to me, I can't get hold of my ADHD meds. And he was... It, it was it was so it was quite scary. It was like mm. watching an addict. Yeah, he was like, oh, I've had to cancel everything for the week. Yeah. And then I thought, God, this is so psychologically um, like this might even be a placebo. I was like, how much well, of this is you believing mm. that you just can't do anything now? It's, it's not that. Not it's literally it. ADHD at times can be so disabling right, for people, right. so debilitating that actually that's what they need. Yeah, you can mask and put all these things on, and you find all these coping strategies, uh -huh. and, and, and actually. People, a lot of people need their meds. Like, my husband's really sweet and says, I've got, like, all the best bits of ADHD. I mean, I really don't, because sometimes it's an absolute I show, think quite do. frankly. Yeah. Bloody hell, there's a lot of swan-like <laughs> yeah. behaviour going on. It's like, no, it's all fine. I love it, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Like, hysterical laughing, like, which way is it going to go? Internally crying, you know? like, yeah. Like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, and I just think that's the thing, is the, the, the medication. So I think what can also happen, as well as when people diagnose, and this maybe is what you saw in your flatmate, mm. is that almost you then go, hold on, it wasn't like that before. Why are you now so reliant on this? But actually, there's almost like a, a bit of a period where you start to understand yourselves more, so it almost feels like you're going backwards a bit. Right. So there are certain things that I can't do, and I'm just like, I used to be able to do that. Well, I didn't. It took so much energy. So, like, I'm a rubbish cook. I've always been a rubbish cook. Right. I, I'm shocking. But my mum would come and say, and I'd, like, whip up a lasagna. But... I don't do that for anyone else. <laughs> right. My husband's like, you're literally faking this. Because the last <laughs> time she came... You're a phony. <laughs> honestly, he's always like... Yeah, wh where's this come from? Yeah. You, don't, you know, and I'm always like, you knew what you were getting into when you married me. Like, I didn't dupe you. I didn't right. make, I wasn't making out like a summer mate. You know, I'm really good on the old takeaway menus. Yes, like, I know yeah, yeah, numbers. yeah, yeah. I'm not missed old meal Delivery. every day of the week. You knew that. No, 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 yeah. No. yeah, you know, and... Um, and, and yet, so when my mum came today, I was like, look, just so you know, actually, that mm. I feel like I've been masking because 
actually, this isn't who I am. So one night we'll have, you know, fish and chips for tea, like takeaway. Mm -hmm. Another night I call it picky bits. You know, like I'm trying picky to... bits in the garden, yeah, favourite. But I was sort of trying to, like, whereas actually before I would make myself do that. If friends came round, I'd be like, oh, no, because I was trying to put this show on of, look at me, I'm a great mum and a great wife. Right. And, oh, my God, I'm great. It's that's not the not that I'm not a great mum. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, in terms of the cooking and the stuff like that, that actually, and it really like you know the housekeeping side of things, and we split things really evenly mm -hmm. with me and my husband. But it takes so much of our energy. And the other day we're like, why are we not like other people? Because yes. we, you know, the house will be clean, clean. Poof, oh yeah, this show. is me. Shocking. Yeah. Boom, boom, clean, clean. And then it, and we're like, why can't we just keep on top of it? And we're like, we know why, and that's yes. okay. Whereas before we'd be like, what is wrong with us? Why? You know, right. we could see it was getting messy again. Why mm -hmm. have we not sorted it? So it's that understanding and that being calm. And I think the, the medication conversation, I think 100% of people want to try it, try it. Yeah. Because it comes out of your body as quickly as it goes in. Okay. So it's not going to then forever will lose the ash yes. spark. Yeah, 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 if you yeah, ever yeah. got officially diagnosed, it wouldn't be that. But I think it's worth bearing in mind that it's not the be-all and end-all because mm -hmm. you need to have all these, you know, if you're out to work or whatever, you need to then have that supportive things in place because the medication isn't going to do everything. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. You're I think I will try it. I, I'm going to... I want get to diagnosed? be proper, properly diagnosed. Yes, I really do want to. I've yeah. been thinking be about assessed. it for ages. See what happens. Yeah, and then just go from there. I wanted to, really quickly, this yeah. is something I find so interesting and it came up on my TikTok the other day. Okay. Um, I've written it down so that I knew I'd... I'd say the right thing. So ADHD in dating oh. and how it affects your dating life. And yeah. I saw a girl do a video about something called object permanence. Oh, my God, yes. And Talk I to. I couldn't... So, essentially, I mean, you will be able to explain this better than me, obviously, so correct me if I'm saying this wrong. But she was basically saying it's almost this concept of out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. So you're extremely attentive and like passionate and in that thing when it's there really intense really intense and i was listening to it and i was like this is me yeah and then the minute it's out of sight yeah as in it, the person the person <laughs> the person yeah it, it's, yeah it's like it doesn't exist yeah 100%. And I feel like this, and it's it's almost given me this, so I'm in a new relationship now, and it's given me, like, a bit of a sense of guilt. Okay. Because I'm really intensely in it and so feeling it when I'm there. Yeah. And it's almost like I'm like, oh, my God, don't leave. Don't want you to ever leave, ever. Yeah, we're together forever now. <laughs> yes, oh, like, yeah. we, must, we must be permanently fused together, I and I'd it. like to be inside your skin. Yes. Uh, yes, I, I want to wear you as a cloak. Yeah. And then afterwards, I come away and I go, what cloak? That. Um, what man, what cloak, does he exist? Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure. And, it, and it's like a real feeling of like, God, I don't understand how I can be so mm. in it there. And it's, it's not as if I don't, when I come away, I don't want it at no. all. It's not that. It's that when I come away, it's almost so out of sight. Yeah. Just because I've not seen him for four days. Yeah. That it, it's such a strange feeling. And I when she described it, I said, I know exactly this feeling. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about that and how that kind of shows up in dating. Yeah. I mean, you've explained it so well. Object permanence is almost the outside out of mind and, and often it's with objects, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you've, you almost can't think about it because you can't see it. So yes. I know I've got this, I've got certain vitamins I'm taking at the moment. If they're in the cupboard, it's not happening. They have to be on the shelf, yes. right? Because I need to be able to see them to remember to take them. Otherwise, I just... I'm the same, like, I love trainers. I forget what I've got if they're not, like, on show. Or right. right. So with people, it's 100% the same. And I was doing some coaching a little while ago. Quite often it's like worky stuff, but often it's home stuff because it mm -hmm. interlinks. And she was like, I've got my boyfriend. And I just, he's like, oh, you're either really intense or you're not at all. And, <laughs> and, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's object permanence with people, right? Right. And so what I was saying is like, you know, it feels a bit cheesy, but like have a photo of them like on your desk or maybe like a screensaver on your phone. Mm. Literally set calendar reminders to send them a quick message. Be really? like a hey, literally as a not as in like a to do or oh, must do, but yes, but those yeah. little touch points because if they're not neurodivergent, they won't get it. Mm -hmm. Even they might not even know they are anyway. Yeah, but that kind of like just checking in or like hey, how are you? Like I do that with my mum. Mm. Like she's the one person I don't forget exists, which sounds. But other people sometimes <laughs> yeah, I don't go, forget exists. You know, oh my god, sometimes I go through my phone and have to message and go, yep, yeah, that friend. Okay, like if I don't yes. see my friends loads, that oh yeah, okay, right. 
Mm -hmm. Just forget that people exist. Yeah. It feels a terrible thing to say. Um, so with dating, it's literally could be like a quick, oh, hey, how are you? Mm -hmm. How's your day? Really like, ooh, cheery, cheery. Yeah. Just as a check-in kind of thing. I think it's also explaining to the partner that you have this thing. Right. Rather than just going, oh, my God, all this guilt of like, yeah, yeah, who yeah. are they? What's yeah. their name? You know. <laughs> But as I said, literally picture on your phone, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, it, it's huge in dating. And I think if you're then trying to cement that relationship, mm. it's like really difficult because yeah. you're like, it feels really all or nothing. So for their point of view, they're like, oh my God. Yes. Which Ash am I getting? Because she's not message for ages right. or whatever. So I would 100% talk about it as well because yeah. then they know that you're like, it's not that I've, I'm just so busy with life. Yes. Or you might think it's about... It's almost them, like a compartmentalising, I think. It's like, like a... a Yes, like, because we often spend weekends together. So it's almost like in my head now, that is our time. time. Yeah. Then when it gets to the week... We well, are so busy as well. It, so then you're like... It's almost it, like um, you don't exist now. So I have to think about all these things and I yeah. can't possibly think about this. Yeah. But I'll see you on the weekend. And obviously it yeah. doesn't, doesn't work that way. No, That's not, not if you want to form a relationship... Works. Right. Long time. Do you know yes. what I mean? If it's long term, if like if they're fine with that, that's fine. Yeah. But if you want to then build on that, mm -hmm. so it's almost literally you could have like a time of day if you're afraid that maybe it's when you wake up in the morning. What you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. Mm. But literally, I now have in my calendar. This is terrible. Cook dinner because I keep <laughs> forgetting. Yeah. And my daughter will be like at six thirty, and she's like, "We have hello, mum. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm wrapping oh. this here. <laughs> but I'll, I'll have asked her at five, and she won't have been hungry. So right. then I'm like. Mm -hmm. Fabulous, because we all eat at different times. It's all a bit... I've literally got in my diary cooked dinner. Forevermore as a reoccurring appointment. If anyone saw that, they'd be like... Forevermore as a reoccurring appointment. Genuinely. No. And, that, and that's the level of detail that you almost need to get to sometimes. Right. So, and it could be a... You know, let's say if someone's like watching this and they're going, oh, my God, you know, and they get the bus to work on the mm. tube. What, that's their time to send a few messages or a little yes. photo, whatever it is. But just and maybe getting into a bit of a routine with that, mm. because that's almost what we need for our ADHD brains is that kind of like routine works well. But mm -hmm. then the re ADHD side goes, nah, don't worry about it. Yeah. But then you need that. So I think yeah, the dating side of things can be really, really difficult. That is so interesting to me because I, I've spoken about this on the pod before, yeah. where um, I've I, I had a real streak of love bomby guys. Yes. And I and always thought to myself, is that because of this? Because I. I almost view it as you're not interested unless you are boom, boom, yes. boom. So, but now, obviously, as I've got older and I've dated a bit, I've realised they are the worst type of men ever to ever exist. We don't want those. Yeah, but for some reason, for all those years, like, that was all I really... Yeah. I didn't really see it going anywhere unless it was mm. that because I thought I equated that to how much they liked me or cared yeah. or... But also that suits the dopamine and the attention seeking that right. can come sometimes if people have got ADHD that like, oh my God, it's all about me. Mm -hmm. So the love bombing... <laughs> it's all about me. I'm here. Valid. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that resonates but do you know what I mean? It's that kind of like, so if you're then being love bombed which is a really bad thing, mm -hmm. like you're then like actually... That's it's just feeding yeah. those, like, desires, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, okay. and also, if you've got ADHD, you can find it really difficult, as I said, if there's an, an overlap with autism or not, or just ADHD on its own. Relationships are really, really difficult, and mm. you can kind of be quite vulnerable and put yourself in vulnerable situations mm. and things like that. So it's almost like knowing your own self as well. And like I was told, like, when my daughter was diagnosed, they were like, oh, some girls are really vulnerable. We don't need to worry about India. <laughs> <laughs> No, Never no, be more yes. proud. And I was like, no, because she's all over it. And the same with my son. I'll watch, like, Married at First Sight or we sometimes watch a little bit of Love mm. Island and go, what do you think to that? And he's like, that's not how... And I'm teaching them how yes. to behave and how not to behave. So if people are, like, watching this going, oh, my God, like, the love bombing thing is, it feels great at the time, but we know that that's really Yes, you know that... So it's kind of like, actually, it's that... It's the constant connection and that's mm -hmm. what you need and build it on a deeper level... And let them see you when you're not 100% all yes. showtime and it's all fabulous. <laughs> showtime. You know what I mean? <laughs> Never. I'm always <laughs> showtime. But no, I agree. Would you say that it's good then to almost... Because I have found myself doing this in this relationship that I'm in now. Uh, I'm really, like, unlearning purposely to kind of go for something that I'm not normally used to in terms of, like, the way that people show emotion and love yeah. and whatever because I know that this love bomby type thing typically I've loved but it's never worked yeah so in this one our I remember at first really struggling with it because I was like he doesn't care yeah like he doesn't like me doesn't and we actually had loads of he's, he's great because we had loads of conversations about yeah. this and I was like 
Um, just when, a quick one. Do you care? Yeah, and he yeah. was like, what? He was like, yeah. I can't believe you think I don't. Mm. What makes you think that? And we had, like, these great conversations about it. And it really made me think, oh, okay, so sometimes do, would you say it's good to really just throw yourself maybe into a bit of uncomfortableness yeah. to kind of unlearn these these traits? Yeah, 100%, because yeah. I just think otherwise you're going through the same thing and you're not mm. getting anything of it. And obviously there's a reason why those relationships haven't worked out. Right. And as you say, it's then looking and learning and almost like, I love that he's like, why do you think that? Mm. Like, that's such a good mm. question. Yeah. Like, why are you th where's this coming from? And I remember I being like, like, I don't know. No. He was like, have I done anything to show you that yeah. I don't care? And I was like... yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. That's interesting. It's, it's finding those bits of evidence, and that's what you quite have to do with coaching, is going, OK, so give me some examples. Have you got an example where that happened? So, mm. you know, is that kind of like... So you're like, well, no, actually, you haven't got any examples of where you've given me reason for you not to think that, but it's not this normal love bombing... Yes. ..which you associate, which hasn't worked out in the past. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like a much healthier relationship. Yes. And then, as you say, it's the object permanent side of things that you want to then make sure that if you then tell him that, and I think that's so important, is being mm. open and going, do you know what, this is how it shows up. Mm -hmm. like, like, I remember when I was really little, I used to, like, get a new pair of shoes for school, and I was thinking about this the other day. I used to put them at the end of my bed, and I used to think it's because I'd be excited when I woke up, but I now realise otherwise I'd forget they existed. Right. Like, so I was doing these coping strategies at, like, eight. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I'm just like... Wow, it's that's just, so interesting. So you'll end up thinking about it with loads of different things. And I think mm. with, with partners, you want that connection. Mm. And you want it... And if some people are fine with just at the weekend, but you need that if you want to build on it. Yes. So whether it's set yourself a reminder, send a little picture every now and then, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like to help support you. Again, it's like asking your friend to remind you for yes. something. Is that like being kind to yourself and the sort of reasonable adjustments. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I talk about it in a workplace, but in your home life, yeah. the, the strategies and little coping things that you can do. Yeah, I found that, I actually noticed this recently, FaceTiming really helps me because I'm seeing him. Yeah. And I think messages, it just feels like words lost in the metaverse. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, I, don't, I could be texting anyone at this yeah. point. Yeah. And I remember I FaceTimed him the other day and was immediately like, oh, there we great. Go. So I feel fantastic. I feel yeah. like close to him and connected now. Yeah. But so I think it's it's those mechanisms yeah. what you were saying, just like finding those little ways to yeah. connect. So it could even be like a little voice note, mm. or even if you can't, then like FaceTime, like you do a little video. Hi, oh, yeah, I'm just yeah. on the way to whatever. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And then back again, and then you've right. got that connection of the face. You've literally can see what he looks like mm. again, and then you get the warm like, oh yay. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's what you want, and you want all you know. Like my husband's forty-eight; he's gonna be fifty next year. Mm. Oh my god, I fancy him so much. Yeah. Oh my god, oh. I can't. Like when I speak to, when I see you, like yeah. even he dropped me off earlier, and he was like, kept stopping, going bye. Yeah. Right, this uh, yeah. Like, no, you okay. hang up. No, you hang yeah, up. Yeah. You know, like, I think that's what you want because you want to build on yeah. that, like really slowly and but strongly. Because mm -hmm. I think you know the whole attention thing from a dating side and the dopamine seeking and the loads of relationships and the whatever. Yeah. That, is what ADHD can look like as well. Sometimes it's kind of like more totally, more. but then it's not sustainable. No. God, I love... I know, we need to wrap it up. I'm so... I could speak to you for 10 hours. Aww. This is... Honestly, thank you so much. Thank you. For joining amazing. me today. Are there any pages that we can follow of you? Yeah, definitely. So I'm on ADHD... Um, not on ADHD. <laughs> I'm Hester I'm ADHD. ADHD. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on Instagram. OK. Hester ADHD. I'm on TikTok. My kids are mortified. Yes. <laughs> I'm following you immediately Oh, my God. I've literally got, like, 200. Fat. Like, honestly, no, God, the I'm, kids are... I'm so gassed. OK. So that's Hester ADHD. Then we've got a website, perfectlyautistic.co.uk, mm -hmm. perfectlyadhd.co.uk. And we've also got two Facebook communities. Amazing. I know Facebook's not super cool, but, like, really nice communities for people, parents and partners. Great. Because sometimes, as well, you can have, you know, be ADHD or be autistic and you need that support as well. So they're on mm -hmm. Facebook as well. That's amazing. I love that. A little community. Yeah. Yay. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. You. I really appreciate you. Guys, like, comment, subscribe if you're watching. Please leave me five stars if you're listening so we can have more amazing guests like Hester. <laughs> uh, tell your mum, tell your dad, tell your granddad, tell your dog. Mwah. I love you all. Thank you.